In this presentation we're going to look at robust regression and in particular we're going to look at the Uber weighting method. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Anyway, so first off what happens is we fit an ordinary least squares uh, regression model to some data. So if you're not unfamiliar with this ordinary least squares that's the usual way of calculating a regression equation. If you're in undergraduate if you're studying undergraduate statistics or some undergraduate statistics module, OLS is what you've seen uh, in the first instance. Okay, so it's what you know and love. So, um, yeah, you fit an OLS regression model to some, some data. Now, this is the important bit. Uh, residuals, let's just say for argument's sake, uh, there are 30 cases. I just made that number up. It's not really particularly important. But let's just say there are 30 cases. And for each of the 30 cases, we calculate the residual. Uh, you know, it's usually a fairly straightforward calculation. If, you, if you're using st st statistical software, you can like uh, extract them automatically. So they, you can get those uh, residuals pretty easily. Okay, so residuals for each of the 30 cases, I just made that, num that number up, uh, residuals for each of the 30 cases are analysed. Okay. So, let's just say for argument's sake that most of the residuals we have from our 30 cases are pretty much unremarkable. They're around zero, let's say, let's say plus or plus two or plus three to minus three, something like that. But we have some unusual cases. Okay. So case 11 has a residual of minus 12, case 17 has a residual of 9, and case um, uh, 29 has a residual of 15, okay? So, um, like, you could have, residuals could be negative or positive, it doesn't really matter, okay? But it does, actually, there's a very strict way of calculating residuals, and you have to keep it consistent the whole way through. Okay, so, uh, just as a quick remark, actually, I'll just scroll back up there by accident, that the, there we are, the notation for residuals is usually E, Okay, so for the ith case, let, or let's say 11 is i, so you would write something like that, ei equals minus 12 if i was 11. Okay, so it's just that the notation there is ei, e subscript i. Okay, now, recall, in ordinary these squares, and this is something you might sort of pass by, you probably wouldn't have noticed the first time around, but in ordinary these square mo uh, regression models, each data point is weighted equally, okay? So each data point is weighted equally when computing the uh, regression equation. That's quite important. So that means that influential data points can substantially affect the calculation of the regression equation. Okay, so there's uh, points in your, uh, something you might be interested in is influential points in your model. Okay, so that's a technical term, influential points and influence. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at an example here. Suppose we have an influential data point. So if we were to, if that wasn't there, okay, our regression equation would probably go through the data like this. Uh, let's use a green pen here. Or use a red pen. So it would go through the data like this. Okay. But because that influential point is there, it actually will get sort of brought up, moved up to be close to the data point, the regression line. So it would sort of, the regression, the regression equation would go up like that. That's the idea of influence. That a, a, a point, an influential point can really change the regression equation just by its presence. Okay. So it could, might move it away from the, the main body of the data just by being um, influential. Okay, so uh, uh, influential points tend to be points with high residuals, although it's not the only way you might ha uh, get influential points. Anyway, inf okay, robust regression. So this is robust regression now. So data points with high residuals are not treated equally when calculating regression the regression equation. This is the idea of re robust regression. So you, you, in robust regression, as opposed to ordinary least squares regression, they are not treated equally. Okay. The, for example, they might be downweighted, uh, less important. Okay. So, but how do we we uh, come up with a system for uh, assigning the new weightings? Okay. So one sort of system is 
the Uber weighting system. Okay. Now the key component of this is that there's a tuning constant. No, sorry, this just might be a little bit hard to read because I sort of. So anyway, tuning constant, and we denote the tuning constant k. K. Okay. Now, so they usually uh, c calculated from the uh, the uh, residuals. So it's usually some sort of straightforward calculation. I'm not really going to get into it because there's different ways you can specify the tuning constant. And you can pick your own, and so on. So this is the general setup. Now this is the weight, the weightings. Okay. Wi. Okay. And there are two scenarios. So if the weighting if the residual, the absolute value of the residual, that's absolute value of residual, so you, you just uh, ignore the sign. The absolute va uh, value of the residual is less than k, you would just leave it as 1. But if the absolute value of the residual is greater than k, then you do this little calculation here. k divided by the absolute value of ei. Okay. So let's just say for argument's sake, in our example, the, the, the tuning constant was 10. Okay, and let's just go back to our three cases. So let's just go back here. So uh, minus 12, 9, and 15. Okay. So case 11, case 17, case 29. Okay. The uh, minus 12, 9, and 15. Okay, so those are the residuals. Okay, so in the first case, the absolute value is 12. Okay, so that's definitely bigger than greater than k. Okay, so the weighting is, so weighting for case 11 is 10 over 12, and that is 5 over 3 or 5 over 6, not 0.833. So rather than having an equal weighting of 1, it only has a weighting of 0.833. So it's only 83% as important as the main body of residuals. Okay. So weighting for case 17. Okay. It's We consider it quite high, but not greater than 10. Not greater than the tuning constant. So we leave it alone. It just stays as 1. It's, it's high, but it's not too high that it's not greater than k. And finally, the last one is case 29. The weighting for case 29 is 10 over uh, 15. Let's just remind ourselves what that means. k over the absolute value of e to the i of e i. So that is 10 over 15, which is not 0.666 and so on. So that is Uber waiting for robust regression.